So my name is Moe Ragmanro and I'm from Maynooth University and also here with me today is my colleague Barbara Ding. Um, so we're going to give you an update on our project which is aligning Maynooth University's accredited teaching and learning programmes with the National Professional Development Framework. Um, this is a single partner project, although as I will refer to during the presentation, we are collaborating with other colleagues and stakeholders across the university sector. So in terms of the professional development framework, our project has three main aims. So first of all, we are benchmarking our current accredited provision in teaching and learning, and that's our professional certificate in teaching and learning for teachers and demonstrators, and also our postgraduate diploma in higher education. We're benchmarking those two programmes with the professional development framework. Once we've completed that process, we're going to redesign both of the programmes so that they align with the framework, and then finally, as an outcome of that process, we are going to develop an alignment toolkit, a PDF alignment toolkit, that we hope that other institutions can use when they are aligning their professional development programmes with the framework. And as we're redesigning our programmes, we have a couple of other additional aspirations in terms of our own programmes. So we want to make them more flexible, both in terms of timelines, also in terms of bringing in some more blended learning opportunities, and also bringing in some new elective modules. And then we also hope to develop a new master's pathway following on from our postgraduate diploma. So yeah, those are the two pre programmes, Professional Certificate in Teaching and Learning for our tutors and demonstrators. That's a currently a five credit module. And then the other one is our Postgraduate Diploma in Higher Education. And that's currently a 60 credit module, programme, sorry. So I'm going to spend the majority of the time today talking about what we've been doing to date and what we've achieved. So we got up and running with the project uh, around mid to end February and we were delighted to recruit Barbara as our project officer. Um, and so since then we have refined our project plan, we've identified our key stakeholders in the project, we've, ident we've obtained um, two sets of ethical approval for the work to be undertaken in the project, um, we've also begun our stakeholder consultations and we've also um, done quite a bit of work on our alignment audit. So I'm going to focus in on those last two today, the stakeholder consultations and our alignment work. So you'll see we identified a range of stakeholders in this project. Um, so these include past and prospective participants on the two programmes, heads of school and also senior management within Maynooth University, our programme teaching staff and also the wider Irish learning and teaching community. So the group that we started with were our heads of school and senior management. And we met with them individually in the first instance. Um, and those were really interesting conversations that we had with them. We found that among that grouping, there was very variable levels of awareness with, with the professional development framework. But we did find that overall, our colleagues were very keen to support staff engagement with professional development. And they were also very supportive of the framework. Also, I'm probably no surprise to anybody in this room, we also heard that they found it very difficult to find space for colleagues to engage with professional development, particularly in relation to teaching and learning. So another two groups that we have engaged with so far are our past and prospective participants on the two programmes. So we've made contact with them through surveys in the first instance, and just looking to find out about their experiences and perspectives on the programmes. Um, and we've also asked them about their experiences and awareness in relation to the professional development framework. And again, amongst that group, awareness of the framework is very variable, but they're all very um, supportive of the framework and do see it as a key mechanism to support them in their own professional development in learning and teaching. So we're just closing up those surveys now and we will follow up with some interviews with some past and prospective participants over the summer months. We're really keen to incorporate the student voice into our redesign of the programmes. So as well as talking at, to our past and prospective students, we also wanted to see how we could incorporate the student voice in terms of our Maynooth student community. So the way we've done that was in the first instance to look at data we had already. So each semester in Maynooth, we issue a Maynooth Student Evaluation of Learning Experience Survey on each module in the university. And so we've taken the general data from that. And we've also taken data that we could derive from the National Student Survey in relation to Maynooth University. 
and we've used that data as the basis for a design of a focus group that we will shortly hold with our students' union executive grouping. In terms of other stakeholders, um, it's really important in terms of this process that we don't only look inwardly face it, we don't just look at Maynooth, we want to develop a toolkit that's going to be useful to other colleagues across the sector. So we have been talking to some of our colleagues, um, I see our colleagues in the Atlas project there, we've been talking to them. Um, and we also have begun some informal discussions with colleagues in other teaching learning centres about how we might pilot a uh, a prototype of the toolkit with them on their programmes in the near future. So that's our stakeholder consultations. Um, I'm now just going to talk a little bit about how we have been aligning our programmes in Maynooth. So we felt it was really important that we did this in a robust and rigorous way. And we felt that the best place to start for that was our programme and module learning outcomes and also our programme assessments and activities. So what we did was we looked at across the five domains at the 30 element statements. And then we rephrased those as 30 evaluative questions across the five domains. So I'll show you what that looks like. So for example, with domain one, element 1.1, we have identification of and reflection on the key personal characteristics that motivate and challenge teaching and so on. So we've taken that and we've uh, prefixed with it with a contextualising question. So we're asking, does the programme provide opportunities for individual participants across all levels of experience and current work context to identify and reflect on, and so on. So you see we also changed the tense there just a little bit in terms of the domain element, but in terms of the key language, we kept all of that intact. So that first question on its own is polarising, it's just going to elicit a yes or no answer, so we also added some other questions in terms of interrogating our programme and module learning outcomes. So we're asking which programme and module learning outcomes directly or indirectly refer to the element. We're looking to see are there examples of evidence-based activity or assessment on the programme that provides support for this. And then finally and most importantly, we're documenting what action might be required. So in some cases, the element might be adequately covered by the programme as it stands. In others, there will be action required in terms of the redesign, so we're documenting that here. So again, to show what that looks like in practice, um, I know I think everyone who's been doing this alignment process so far has been using Excel, and we are no different. Um, so we're categorising, we're uh, identifying the elements, we're categorising um, whether a programme learning outcome is meeting those elements or not, um, and then we're identifying and cat um, cataloguing any action that's required. So we're doing that in Excel. So that's just an example across a programme learning outcome. There's another one, and this one is across a module. So what have we learned from this? Well, it's a really labour-intensive process, um, and I know colleagues in other projects have found that to be the case too. Um, we feel that that is to be expected in conducting a rigorous evaluation of the programmes, and we do hope that when we develop our alignment toolkit, we'll be able to reduce that load for our colleagues in other institutions. Um, but this is just a breakdown of the volume of work that's being undertaken and also the amount of data that's being generated in the process. So we can see in the PGDHE, we started off with seven programme learning outcomes. And then across the four modules on that program, we've got 27 module learning outcomes. So that comes to a total of 34. So then we pose 30 questions to the 34 modules. We're ending up with just over 1,000 pieces of um, information. And then when we multiply that by four, because we had four questions, if you'll recall, call from the other slide, we end up with nearly 4,000 cells of data. And that's not all. <laughs> so we've also got our, our other programme, which is the Postgraduate Tutors and Demonstrators programme, and that adds another 840. So Barbara here, by the time she has finished the alignment process, is going to have completed nearly 5,000 cells of data in Excel. So a lot of data, um, but also worthwhile, we think. think. So we do think the process has been very effective for us so far. It has really allowed us to very carefully and systematically audit our programmes against the framework. Um, so we've identified various things through that. So we know, for example, that our current programmes do, do provide fairly good support in relation to digital learning, but that's not really very well articulated in terms of our programme outcomes. 
We also found that while we're performing quite well in relation to the five elements across domain one, when we redesign the programmes, we really are going to have a, need to have a much stronger focus on domain five. Um, we also found that the process has been very useful to us in Maynooth in terms of feeding up to our senior management colleagues in relation to the work that we're doing and its importance because Maynooth University is currently in the process of redeveloping their strategic plan so we have been able to identify and highlight to our colleagues the importance both of the programmes and also of the professional development framework to them. So, as I said, we are generating a lot of data here, um, and that's something that we're grappling with at the moment. How best will we deal with that in terms of the development of our toolkit? In terms of future work, um, over the summer, we'll complete our stakeholder consultations. That work has taken a little bit more time than we had expected, um, primarily because um, our colleagues are busy people and it can be difficult to get to meetings um, with them. Um, we also will run a professional development framework masterclass. Again, that's something we had hoped would happen earlier, but we do think it's very important that we talk to our colleagues about the framework, about the work that we're doing, before we get them all in a room together to talk about it. And then by the end of July or so, we will complete the alignment audit on both of our programmes. So then, based on that, we are going to work on redesigning our programmes. Um, and through that, we'll incorporate opportunities for our participants to demonstrate their competencies across the framework. And we think that a key way that we're going to do that is to support them to develop a professional teaching and learning portfolio. So it's directly going to mirror the, uh, the, the framework. And then as we roll out the aligned programmes, we'll get ongoing feedback from our participants during that time too. So I've mentioned the alignment toolkit um, several times, so that's uh, our ongoing goal um, to develop that. And we also want to su supplement the toolkit with some case studies uh, or use case examples. Um, the first of those will be the institutional case, so we'll show how we in Maynooth uh, mapped and redesigned our programmes. We also hope to get some of our participants in the two programmes to show how they have aligned their current and planned CPD with the framework. And then finally, in terms of impact and sustainability, we do think that the project um, will and will continue to have um, impact. First of all, a key impact is that we are going to have two programmes which are aligned with the framework. Um, I mentioned as well that we're trying to identify synergies between the work that we're doing and the strategic plan, and we hope to feed into that. Over the longer term, I hope that a lightweight or light touch alignment audit might be something that we can integrate into programme review so that we can ensure ongoing alignment with the professional development framework. And then at a national level, um, I think that by a, the very virtue of us going through this process as an institution is going to be a very interesting case study and proof of concept for other colleagues in other institutions who want to do this. We also hope that our alignment toolkit is going to take some of the workload out of the alignment process for our other colleagues and make things a little bit more efficient. Um, and then over the longer term, we'll of course um, disseminate the outcomes of our work through um, informal and formal channels. So that's it. Um, thank you very much. And, um,